real YouTube is. Have an intro with some background music that sounds something like this. Um, that was really hard for me to, like, there was, I had to click a lot of buttons there. Anyway, um, first of all, shout out to Grubby underscore SSB. He made that really sick background music for the intro. I don't think I'll use it every time, but I, I thought it was cool, so I wanted to use it. Um, anyway, so today we're going to be doing something that I think is going to make a lot of people very angry. Um, please, please, please no angry. Oh, I forgot to make background music for this. What do I do? Is it this one? Thank you, Glitch XD. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, okay. So today we're talking about Mega Evolution and were they good or bad for the game? Um, I was never really a fan of Mega Evolution. I'm going to be completely honest. So over like the past few months of Sword and Shield and seeing comments and reading what people are saying about Mega Evolution, I was really surprised because it seems to me like people really like Mega, uh, really like Mega Evolution and it seems like it's a really popular mechanic. I, like I said, was never really a fan of it. So I wanted to talk a bit about whether they were good for the game or bad for the game, um, and kind of their impacts and whatnot. So, yeah, with all that being said, it's just my opinion. If you disagree, that's fine. Yeah, this is just my opinion, and my opinion is also very uh, heavily influenced by my history in competitive play. Like, if you didn't play VGC, then maybe you like Mega Evolution more, or maybe they are better in singles or worse in singles, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is just my opinion, so okay. Let's, now that that's out of the way, basically... What is Mega Evolution? For those of you who started in Generation 8, that music's too loud, isn't it? Nah, it's a little loud. Um, for those of you who started in Generation 8, you probably never dealt with Mega Evolution because it's not in the game. Uh, basically, what Mega Evolution is, is it's a transformation of a Pokemon. It's kind of a DBZ power-up level, or power-up, like, type thing, yeah, where basically a Pokemon has to hold an item and only certain Pokemon can do it, unlike Dynamax, which applies to every Pokemon. Um, and then they'll transform from the regular version into uh, a Mega Form. The, the main changes of Mega Pokemon is most of them have different abilities. Um, I'm not sure if all of them do, but the majority of them have different abilities. Um, they get a net 100 stat increase, uh, 100 base stat increase. So, for example, we can see that Mega Venusaur here. If you were to compare, you would see that it has exactly 100 more base stats. <gasps> Excuse me, than, um, than regular Venusaur. And the thing about that is there's some Pokemon like Mega Abomasnow. Uh, and Mega Heracross, which actually gets slower, so then they gain over 100 stats because they lose 10 speed or 20 speed or whatever. Where's Abomus now? Um, yeah, Abomus now also gets slower. It goes down to 30 base speed, so it gets a yeah, bigger increase in its offensive stats. Um, so abilities change, stats change. Sometimes typing will change. Pokemon like Mega Charizard X have a typing change. The Mega Mewtwo uh, fighting type has a typing change as well. So, um, yeah, so it's abilities it's um the stats it does not move pool it's not an hp never changes unlike dynamax it's yeah uh very yeah different than dynamax so only the pokemon that have a mega mega stone are able to dynamax um and only yeah and you have to hold the item and you only get one per game similar to dynamax and the pokemon will not revert um for the rest of the game so unlike dynamax which will revert it's a permanent transformation of the pokemon um yeah in Generation 6, the way that it worked as well was that po some, po some Mega Pokemon get faster. Many Mega Pokemon get faster. Um, however, the speed boost is not applied until the next turn. In Generation 7, they changed that to the speed boost is applied immediately. In Generation 8, all speed is applied immediately. So, um, yeah. So, basically, when we're talking about Mega Evolution, we have to break it down, in my opinion, into two parts. The first part is Generation 6, and the second part is Generation 7. Mega Evolutions were introduced in Generation 6. After the Golden Age of Generation 5... Uh, Mega Evolution is introduced in Generation 6 as the key kind of gimmick, the key mechanic of Generation 6. Every every generation has some kind of unique mechanic, at least starting in, with Mega Evolutions. We had Mega Evolutions in Generation 6, then we had Z-Moves in Generation 7, and now we have Dynamax. So, Mega Evolution was the gimmick or um, the mechanic of Generation 6, uh, and, you know, it's clearly meant to be, in some regards, if, like, they do it with Pokemon that are popular, right? You see, we have the three starters... And they also do it with Pokemon that um, never were very good. So, for example, Beedrill gets a Mega Evolution. Pidgeot gets a Mega Evolution. Alakazam, don't really know why. I think it's good in singles. Um, lots of, lots of Gen 1 Pokemon get Mega Evolutions. You can see that all of these first ones are, are Gen 1 Megas. Um, yeah. Um, some of these also were not released until Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. So, yeah. And you can see that uh, there's almost none after Gen 4. They gave Audino one and Diancie one, but this was never VGC legal. So basically, the only one, the only Mega Evolution after Gen 4 
Um, so, uh, the only Mega Evolution of Generation 5 and Generation 6 is Audino and then, I guess, Diancy. And even Sinnoh. Sinnoh actually has a couple. Like, they have Lopunny, Garchomp, Lucario, and Obama Snow. But, yeah, it's very kind of first generation, first three generations heavy. Um, Latios, Latios, Salamence, Metagross, Glalie, Obama Snow. Yeah, all the other generations have more, um, than three, I think. Assuming Generation 2 is a good chunk. Yeah, Generation 2 is a decent chunk, given it's not a very big generation. So, yeah. Basically, um, I'm not sure exactly how they decided to give... Pokemon Mega Evolutions, I think they did some that were iconic, and some, yeah, I don't know, like, I don't know where some of these came from, some that were popular, obviously, like, Lucario gets one, um, yeah, so, the thing about Mega Evolution is that, because you can only have one per game, it creates this kind of dichotomy, right, and that, let's say I love Beedrill, and I'm, I'm Beedrill Trainer 999, right, if I want to use Mega Beedrill on my team, I'm putting myself at a huge disadvantage, because I'm giving up something like Mega Kangaskhan, right, um, and by giving up something like Mega Kang by using Mega Beedrill, I can no longer use Mega Kangaskhan in that match. Kind of same thing goes for Pidgeot. Granted, Beedrill and Pidgeot had some niche uses, but over, like, by, like, overall, they were not used very much. What happened generally with Mega Evolution in Generation 5, or Generation 6, excuse me, was that, um, in 2014, you had kind of a very, very, very limited choice that you could effectively choose from. Uh, the ones that were good, Mega Venusaur had some play, uh, it wasn't bad. Charizard Y was one of the best ones. Um, Blastoise wasn't super common, though it had some use. Beedrill, Pidgeot, Alakazam, Slowbro were not used very much. Gengar actually wasn't used that much in 2014 either. There was, uh, Gengar was used like a, Gengar was like an okay one. Like, you'd have to give up some things, but it was used with like, was it Lipard? Yeah, Lipard, Gengar, and you could do Encore to stable stuff, so it was okay. Kangaskhan was probably the best one. Um, Pinsir wasn't used very much. Gyarados actually wasn't used very much until stage in one worlds with it, and even after that, it was kind of a niche pick. Um, Aerodactyl was okay, but not great. These weren't legal. I don't even remember if Ampharos was legal, but it was, like, there was, like, a, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a very clear power difference between something like Charizard or Y, which has Drought and sets the sun for itself and then can use Heat Wave or Flamethrower or Overheat, and something like Ampharos or Steelix, though Steelix is strong, um, or Scizor or, or Heracross or Houndoom. Tyranitar, not really great. These weren't introduced, but they still weren't good anyway. Um, Gardevoir was not introduced in 2014. When it was introduced, it actually was pretty good. Um, Sableye. I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you all the ones that were not. I'm gonna, I guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you the other ones that were not really like worth looking into. Agron wasn't used very much. Medicham like, obviously got second at Nationals last year, but it was considered not to be a very good Pokemon. It's still probably considered not to be a very good Pokemon. Manectric was like a B-tier Mega. like You could fit it, but it generally wasn't very good. Sharpedo bad. Camera bad. Altaria bad. Banette bad, but I won a regional with it. Um, Absol bad. Glalie bad. Mence was good. Metagross was good. These weren't legal initially. Um, the Latios and Latios ones were not super good. Rayquaza was good, Lopunny was meh, Garchomp was bad, Lucario was bad, Obomasto was bad, Gallade was bad, Audino was bad, Dancy wasn't legal. Okay. So, if we go through this list again, talk about the good ones, you had Venusaur as a B-tier Mega, like, you could use it, but you'd be giving up some stuff. Charizard X was, like, a B-tier Mega or a C-tier Mega. Uh, it was okay. Charizard Y was good, um, Gengar was good, start, uh, after 2014, yeah, and even in 2014, so we have Gengar, we have Charizard, we have Kangaskhan, that's three. Um... We have Tyranitar I'd put in a B tier. I'd say Tyranitar is a B tier mega, but not, yeah, not great. Gardevoir, that's four. We'll give it five. Mawile, that's six, but only in 2014, not after that. Ments, Metagross, that's eight. Rayquaza, but we're not counting that because it's only restricted formats. Eight. You had eight megas you could choose from effectively, and some of those were pretty bad. I probably counted wrong, but like you had less, you probably had less than 10 megas that were actually viable out of this whole list. Um,. And the Megas, like, the thing about them, the reason why you couldn't use other ones, or you shouldn't use other ones, I should say, um, unless you had a very specific purpose for them, like, you had, like, a gimmick team built around Mega Sceptile's Lightning Rod, was because of the power. So, if we look at Generation... What Generation am I on? I think this is 7, actually. I think, yeah, I think I'm Generation 7 right now. Let's go to Generation 6. Let's talk about Kangaskhan, because this thing was broken. This thing was actually broken. Yeah, we're in... Oh, wait, no, I was in 6. Okay. Um... So basically, what was broken about Kangaskhan? First of all, its bulk was insane. Uh, it has really, really good bulk. It has one weakness. You can see that it's base 105 HP and 100 defenses, 100 uh, speed and 125 uh, attack stat with return, which is a one over 100 base power move that hit two uh, two times. So it broke focus ashes. It did. It was like choice band stab return from 125 base attack with no drawbacks and no choice locks. Uh, yeah, no choice lock. Um, in addition to that, most Kangaskhan run fake out, and then they would run. Let's find it. Where is it? Power-Up Punch. Power-Up Punch they gave to Mega Kangaskhan. 
not realizing, I think, how broken it would make the Pokemon. Uh, Power Punch turned Mega Kangaskhan into a Pokemon that was very good, into a Pokemon that was probably the best in the format, uh, in most formats. Um, Kangaskhan only won Worlds, like, once. However, it's not, it's, that's not a showing of Kangaskhan's strength. It's because the metagame was forced to evolve to specifically counter Kangaskhan. Uh, Worlds 18, or, sorry, Worlds 14, it really felt like Mawile, or, like, at Nationals, around Nationals and Worlds time, Mega Mawile became the meta. Not because Mawile was necessarily, like, super broken or anything, though it was very good, but specifically because Kangaskhan was such a problem, and, like, Mawile gave you Intimidate, and it gave you Resistance to, uh, Steel and Dark, so, yeah, it was, or er, Normal and Dark, excuse me, um, yeah, so basically the metagame was forced to evolve just to deal with Kangaskhan. Power Punch, the reason it was so broken on Kangaskhan is because you got to use a move, basically you got a Swords Dance that did damage, um, so you got Fighting Type coverage, so you could use that for, against Pokemon like Tyranitar, um, and, yeah, you got Fighting Type coverage with a Swords Dance effect. You would hit twice, uh, provided you hit twice, um, you could give your Pokemon a Swords Dance boost. And when you combine that with Return and with Sucker Punch, getting a Power Punch at the right time could just end games. Um, you could pair Kangaskhan with good support Pokemon. It was always paired with, or it was often paired with Smeargle for Follow Me or Amoongus for Rage Powder. Um, and it was also, like, I don't know, I want a regional using Mega Kangaskhan, and what I would do is I would lead Azumarill Kangaskhan. And I would bluff fake out Belly Drum, and as they doubled Azumarill, I would just protect Azumarill and power a punch. And then next turn I would Belly Drum, because now I had plus two Kangaskhan. And I did that for, like, all of a regional. And, like, yeah, like, you had counters to it, it was, but it was broken. There's no there's no doubt in my mind it was broken. Um, the moves didn't deviate too much. Sometimes people ran Protect, sometimes people ran... It was no, normally Fake Out, because it had a Fake Out, which was one of the best attacks in the game. Um, there was no counterplay to Fake Out. There's no, there was no, like, Dynamax stopping Fake Out. You just had to deal with it. So it had Fake Out, so it was a support. It could function as support. Like I mentioned, it had Power Punch, so it could function as a Sweeper. It could function. It had Return and Double Edge, so it could just do damage outright without boosting. And it had Sucker Punch for priority, which was still high. It was 80 base power back in the day. And this is all with a Stab boost, effectively, for the non-Stab moves, and a Choice Band boost for the for the Stab moves. So, yeah. Effectively, I'm talking so much about Kangaskhan, because I think it was the most broken Mega in Generation 6. Uh, yeah, Generation 6. Um, and I, I hope that kind of makes sense as to why you, like, couldn't use something like Beedrill, Right? Because, like, you don't get that... Like, sure, you get adaptability, but if you get intimidated, like... You know? And, yeah, you're giving... You, like, you like if you use Beedrill, you don't get Fake Out. You don't get you know, Choice Band Fake Out. You don't get Choice Band Return. Um, you have strong stabs, but, yeah, you have, like, more base speed. Like, there are some reasons to use Beedrill, but, like, with the base defense and stuff... There's a reason the majority of people use Kangaskhan and not Beedrill, is, I guess what I'm saying. Um, I could go into more depth for, like, some of these other Pokemon. Like, I talked about Charizard Y and just the insane damage output and the weather control, which is valuable... Um, cause like, yeah, sun boosted overheat from base 159 special attack is very strong. And even heat wave does a ton of damage. So Charizard was really strong. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of the, which other ones were actually like super broken. I don't think Gardevoir was broken. Gardevoir was good. Um, Mens was very strong as well. Mens has won worlds three times. Um, although didn't win in generation six to be fair. Um, but yeah, basically Aerialate and Pixelate in this generation gave you, this is wrong. This is, this is wrong. Uh, it was a it was a 33% boost, I think, to normal type moves. Um, so yeah, basically like Aerialite and Pixelate were very, very strong. So Mega Solomons and Mega Gardevoir both had tournament wins. Um, Mega Gardevoir won the national championships in 2015. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say. Like Rayquaza was obviously broken, but they didn't like it was. It's in a restricted format, so yeah, it's fine. It actually, actually no, it wasn't broken. Like because Xerneas, <laughs> yeah, Xerneas and Groudon were the main players. Um, I feel like Metagross didn't get a ton of play back in, in Generation 6 either. Yeah. Now that I think about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mega Evolution also heavily encouraged offensive play. Even though. Um, even though. Like many of them were clearly built with defensive intent in mind. Like Prankster Mega Banette. Oh my god. They, I ran Mega Banette. It has 165 base attack. Which at the time was one of the highest. I didn't run any offensive moves. It was Will-O-Wisp. Pain Split. Disable. And. Wait. What was the last move? What did I run on this thing? Wait, sorry, I need to figure this out. What did I run? Was it Taunt? No, I definitely didn't have... No, was it Taunt? It wasn't Skill Swap. I don't remember what the last move was. will o -Wisp, Pain Split, Disable... Oh, I think it was Protect. Because, yeah, yeah, because you had to Protect in front of Disable. That makes sense, yeah. Because you couldn't... You didn't get Prankster Boost turn one. That's right. Um, Yeah. Um, yeah, Sharpedo, like, so many of these were just, like, really, really bad, and, like, okay, some of them, like, Mega Venusaur were built with the defensive intent in mind, and to be fair, Mega Venusaur had some success, like, I won a regional with it, I think it did well at Nationals in 2014, I think, it might have had some use in 2015 as well, but, 
by like by far it was pretty much outclassed by a lot of these other ones so yeah basically the main thesis of my argument in generation six is that megas were broken and like or a couple megas were, were so broken that they invalidated the rest of the cast from a competitive standpoint um because by using something like by by mega evolving your pincer in game or your i don't know steelix or scissor in game well not steelix but if, by um yeah by mega evolving one of these other pokemon in game your your opportunity cost is too high to justify it because you give up something like kangaskhan or gengar or charizard right so that's the thesis however in generation seven that changes a little bit let's go to generation seven Can I not search my mega, my, my mega evolution anymore? Okay, that's fine. We'll just figure out a workaround. Hang on. I think if I go here and do mega evolution and then I do... Oh, I think this was generation 7. Yeah, yeah, you know what? This, this just took me to all of... This is generation 7's list, now that I look at it. Because I don't think Gigant is generation 6. Though it's not legal, it's in VGC, so... Oh, maybe it is gen 6. Wait, Zygarde is definitely a gen 6 Pokemon. X and Y. Okay, I don't know. Do they add any more Mega Evolutions in Generation 7? I don't think they did. Okay, we can look at the same list for Generation 7, um, but we can talk about what changed. So, first of all, in Generation 7, Mega Evolutions got a nerf, a lot of them. Um, so, Gengar lost Levitate. That's the f Let's just, we'll just go through the good ones one at a time. Charizard didn't really get nerfed, um, as far as I can remember. I don't think Charizard got nerfed, but that's fine. Um... So Gengar. Gengar got uh, nerfed a little bit because the base form lost Levitate, which actually changed how you could play Gengar um, a lot. Uh, with Levitate Gengar, you, like, you were able to use it as a switch in, so you could bring it, like, and you could you got to play mind games with, like, oh, you have Landorus? Well, if I don't Mega Evolve, you don't beat me with, like, U-Turn or Rock Slide. So they, like, the opponent would have to play a mind game, and you could delay Mega Evolution. However, with Curse Body, which is garbage on Gengar, like, yeah, they nerfed it pretty... The nerf actually has a big role. The next up is Parental Bond. Kangaskhan has two huge nerfs, and they make it actually finally, like, a balanced Pokemon. Um, the damage inflicted by the second hit is 25%. Generation 6, it's, uh, 50%. So, this damage nerf, and it's only 25%, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but it has a really big impact on Kangaskhan and its damage output. Actually, there's another nerf. The next nerf is that Power Punch is removed from, um, Kangaskhan's toolkit. It can no longer learn to Power Punch. So, um, Kangaskhan would run a low kick or whatever. It was still a good Pokemon, but, um, yeah, losing the ability to boost its attack made it much more, easy, like, uh, manageable to deal with. And the last one is that Sucker Punch actually gets a nerf as well. It goes down from 80 base power to 70 base power. Which, considering you're multi like there's a multiplier on top of that, the damage is actually pretty significant. Like, it's only a 10 base power difference, but it wasn't super strong in the first place. And now it's, like, slightly more than 10 because you have, of course, a 25% damage reduction. So, um, yeah, like a 70 base power move from Kangaskhan, considering it's not stabbing, considering the damage reduction, is, like, Sucker Punch is much weaker than we were accustomed to. So, I think those are the main nerfs on Kangaskhan. Um... Pinsir gets nerfed because they nerfed Salamence. Er oh, I'll talk about that in a little bit, actually. Um, none of these were worth nerfing. Tyranitar doesn't get nerfed because it wasn't worth nerfing. Um, Gardevoir gets nerfed uh, a little bit. Pixelate is changed from 33% to 20%. Uh, it's a huge difference in power. Like, the damage, you can feel it. Sylveon, Gardevoir, and Mega Salamence, and Mega Pinsir all feel the damage uh, reduction. Sableye gets buffed, actually, because... Oh, wait, no, Sableye gets nerfed as well, but not, not on purpose. Just because Prankster now... Like, now the ability activates immediately, I think, so... Yeah, I think you lose pranks for the first turn, though I actually have forgotten. Molly gets a slight nerf. Uh, it wasn't really worth nerfing. It was good, but it wasn't, like, broken. It was really only good in 2014, although it actually it won Nats in 2016, or Regionals. What did Alex win? I don't remember. I think it was... I think it was Nationals. Um, yeah, Sucker Punch is a slight nerf, but Molly is fine. Um, yeah, Mens gets nerfed as well. I think that was the last really broken one. Uh, with Aerial Aid, it gets, it gets some buff, because now the speed, uh, the speed updates, uh, immediately, which is nice, um, for Ments. However, yeah, Aerial Aid gets, uh, weakened to 20%, so, um, yeah, it is a slight, a slight nerf. However, the funny thing is that Ments actually wins worlds in the two formats as legal in, um, the Gen 8, or Gen 7, so, uh, yeah, Ments, even though it technically got a nerf, it really starts performing well. And none of the rest of these need a nerf. So, the real thing for me was the reduction in damage in Kangaskhan and the slight weaknesses to, uh, yeah, the slight weaknesses to Gengar and Kangas or Gengar and Mence as well. Um, really kind of changed Mega Evolution's dynamic. However, it didn't change the dynamic within Mega Evolution, it just changed how Mega Evolution interacted with other Pokemon. I think something that I forgot to mention was that, like, a lot of Generation 6's games felt like they centered around the Mega Evolution, kind of similar to Dynamax, in my opinion. Like, who could use their Mega Evolution better? Who's Mega Evolution, like, matched up positively? There were games where, like, Kangaskhan was the star of the show, and, like, you just couldn't do anything about it. 
And j technically, I guess, in, gen in VGC 2015, that changed a little bit. Um, and in 2016 as well, I guess, I think, I'm, I'm thinking mostly of gen uh, 2014. Because in 15 and 16, the, well, in 15, the Pokemon were better, and in 16, we had restricted. So, maybe that's not entirely fair, but Mega Evolution was still a crucial part of most game plans and most games. And so, um, yeah, like, especially in formats in 2014, when there weren't a lot of other Pokemon that could, keep, like, keep up, the Mega Evolutions played a huge role um, in the format. So, huh, yeah, so... Basically, by weakening Kangaskhan um, and Gengar and some of these other really powerful ones, it made it like they made it more viable for other Pokemon to compete with the Mega Evolutions. However, there's something we really have to talk about if we're going to talk about Mega Evolution in Generation Seven, and that is that there were three formats. There were three years of Generation Seven, right? You had 2017, 2018, and 2019, which was split up into three parts. Mega Evolution was not legal in 2017, it was legal in 2018, and it was only legal for the last third of 2019. Therefore, we only got two out of six formats with Mega Evolution, being VGC 2018 and VGC 2019 Ultra Series. Um, Ultra also having Primal Groudon and Primal Kyogre and Mega uh, Rayquaza and all the, that jazz, so um, yeah, and Xerneas and, and all that stuff. So we can only really talk about how Mega Evolution impacted Generation 7 in 2018 and in Ultra Series. And Ultra is a little weird because, again, we had Primals. Um, 2018, I would, you know, it wasn't my best format, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I didn't feel like I really had a good handle on it. And so, um, yeah, like, I, I'm going to try to, like, take this with less, uh, like, to keep that in mind when I'm telling you about it. But basically, like, some more Pokemon were viable. Charizard X wins a regional. Thank you, Wolf. Um... Uh, um, Venusaur is still viable, Treasure X went to regional, Blastoise is okay, like, Slowbro actually gets, Slowbro actually gets some use in, in Gen 6, actually. Uh, I think Slowbro was brought to Worlds, and, yeah, Slowbro was actually, oh wait, that wasn't Mega, Slowbro in 7, in 2017, because, yeah, Alex used that one, but it wasn't Mega. Uh, Mega Gengar is still good, Kangaskhan's good, but not, like, as good as it was, meaning, like, more Megas are now available. But a lot of these Megas, truthfully, are still on the bench. Tyranitar was actually good in generation, in 2018, in my opinion. Um... Swampert still doesn't see play. Blaziken sees a little bit of play on, like, gimmicky hyper-offense teams with, like, Bisharp, but it's still not much. Gardevoir usage feels like it goes down. Um, Mawile actually doesn't really show up at all. Um, Medicham does get second at, at National, so, yeah. Um, a lot of these are still bad, I'm gonna be honest. Like, Metagross, the, the real, honestly, the one who benefited the most, in my opinion, is Mega Metagross, who, thanks to Tapu Lele, was actually, like, good in 2018. Um, yeah, but for a lot of these, you still wouldn't use them. Garchomp, Lucario, Bomus, Nuggle. Yeah, you wouldn't, you still wouldn't use that many of them. So, basically... Even with the nerfs, you only still ended up using a few Mega Evolutions. Like, Metagross gets added. And you could justify using things like Mega Medicham on certain teams. Like, obviously, got second at Nationals. And then, yeah, like, because they were weaker, like, you could, in theory, use more of them. Like, you could use Manectric more freely, I think. Um, but a lot of them were still, frankly, just bad. Um, Charger Dex also got a buff. So, the problem of, like, diversity within Mega Evolution and competitive play didn't change. Because, again, like, if you wanted to use something like Pidgeot, I don't know why you're not running Salamence, right? Um... And, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for the most part, that problem didn't change. However, the way they interacted with the rest of the format was not as ridiculous, in my opinion. Games no longer felt like they were centered around Mega Evolution. We had other powerful Pokemon as well, like the Tapus. And, like, granted, like I said, in 2015, um, when we had other Pokemon, like, it wasn't only about the Mega Evolution. Like, you had Pokemon like Land Landorus and Cresselia, um... And, um, what else was broken? Like, not broken, but Heatran was good... Um, Thunderous is really good. So it wasn't just about the Mega Evolution, though Kangaskhan still played a pretty big role. Um, and Charizard and all that, all that stuff. So, um, it wasn't as centered. Yeah, but I still feel like 2018, it wasn't as centered around the Mega Evolution because we didn't have stuff like Kangaskhan, you know? Mega Evolution felt more manageable. And they also introduced some other very powerful Pokemon like Tapu Koko and Tapu Lele and Tapu Fini. And of course, the strongest, Tapu Bulu, uh, who could help, like... And, okay, also, the addition of Z-moves, like, added a pretty notable power spike for a lot of these Pokemon. So, like, Electrium Z Tapu Koko or Psyche Z Tapu Lele. Like, it wasn't just one powerful Pokemon you were playing around now. It was, it was two. Um, so, instead of, like, yeah. So, basically, like, instead of just having one main source of damage output and, like, you're protecting that, you had at least two on most teams for most games. So, um, yeah. So, that, so, it was more manageable and it, they felt, they were less standout-ish. Were those formats great with both Mega Evolution and Z-Moves? I would argue maybe not. Um, I didn't like them personally. Um, however, yeah, like, it wasn't Mega Evolution's fault, per se, I would say. Um, and they felt more manageable. And then in 2019 Ultra Series, Mega Evolution's played a role, but the, again, like, in any restricted format, the restricted are kind of the point. So, I don't think you can blame Mega Evolution too much for any issues with Ultra. Um, so, I'm, actually, Mega Evolution didn't even... There was a team James Beck used to get top four at the World Championships that didn't even use Mega Evolution. So... 
Um, I think that kind of proves that it wasn't it wasn't needed because that was one of the first times I'd seen a team with that Mega Evolution do well since like early 2014. So, um, when it was legal, of course. So, basically, here's my hypothesis: Generation Six Mega Evolution was pretty bad for the game. Um, it was not a healthy thing. They were too they were too powerful compared to everything else, and even when they were less powerful, they were too powerful compared to themselves. So that like. They were still some of the strongest Pokemon in the format, even if they weren't like so far above. They were still always up there, meaning they were still crucial parts of game plans and games still centered around them in a way that was unhealthy, in my opinion. In Generation 7, they're be they're they're better. Um, the addition of Z moves make them less crazy comparably. Um, games are no longer centered around them. However, we do have to keep in mind that they were only legal for two formats, and if they'd been legal for 2017 and then the rest of 2019, maybe we'd feel differently. Cause yeah, like the the sample size just isn't super big. We basically we basically we effectively had one regular format with Z move or with um mega evolution so yeah like that that colors the perspective overall i think i would prefer the game without them i like having sword and shield without them i don't think they're particularly interesting i think they're kind of limited in what you can do with them for the most part at least in a consistent way like sure i could build a pidgeot team or a slowbro team or a alakazam team right but they're not going to be like they're not going to be as good teams in general as if i use something like charizard y or kangaskhan or gengar or salamence or metagross right and so given that you're effectively choosing from 10 or less 10 is being very generous um the top tier are probably five and you really want to be using one of those most of the time i think i'd rather they stayed out of the game they were a cool mechanic in theory i like them in theory in practice i didn't like them very much um i would be happy if they stayed out of the game i don't want mega evolutions back at all um i understand why people like them i understand why it's cool especially if like you're a casual fan and you get to see like some of your favorite pokemon that are normally bad like get better totally get that like if you like mega evolution power to you but from a competitive standpoint and from my specific competitive standpoint because i know other competitive players might not agree with me i don't want them back that's just my opinion i think i think overall they made 20 they made gen 6 volatile uh gen 7 they didn't like they didn't make it volatile per se but honestly they, like, they didn't add much either that's just the fact like mega evolution didn't add anything to the game in 20 in, in generation 7 in my opinion or at least it didn't add very much so I'd be happy if they stayed out of it, personally. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have to say about it. So I'm sure people are going to be angry about this. So uh, if you're not angry at me, please pray for me. And I think that's all I want to say. Thanks for watching. Let me know what other topics you want covered. And I'll see you next time. Peace.